Good morning. This is our midweek Bible study, and we have a visitor here today. Uh, we're going to get into this this Bible. This is our daily word, our daily bread, our daily word. We need the Word of God in order to get by in these days in which we live in. Everything else we hear are fears and lies and so on. We need to listen to the Word of God. That's where our peace comes from. That's where our direction comes from. So we thank the Lord for our daily bread. Let's go to prayer. Our Lord Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to open up your word, to listen to what you have to say to us by your word and by your spirit. We pray, Lord, bless this message to those that are listening. We pray, Lord, that hearts would be open to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to blow the shofar. that didn't eliminate our visitor. Uh, so let's get into the study. Therefore, since we have this ministry, the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 is where we're at today. And he begins the, the, the first verse there with therefore. So when, when there's a therefore, it's linked to the previous chapter. And he ends the previous chapter with uh, verse 18 of chapter 3. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed in the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Not only are we reflecting the image of the Lord, but the Spirit of the Lord is changing us from glory to glory. And then he says, since those things are happening, he says, therefore, in chapter 4, verse 1, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy... We do not lose heart, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of, of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And so since, since we have... Since we have the Lord Jesus Christ in our life, we're reflecting his glory. He, he's changing us from glory to glory. And we present the word of God without any uh, worldly or, or uh, um, uh, human craftiness, but by the spirit of the Lord in complete honesty, presenting the gospel of Christ. And verse 3 says, but even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. So our gospel that we preach is clear and true. But to those that are perishing, it is, it is veiled because those, the minds, but it goes on to say in, ver, in this verse, whose minds, verse 4, the, the, the God of this world has blinded who do, not, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So that's the work of the enemy, trying to keep the minds blinded of those that don't know the Lord, those that have not believed yet, so that they won't come to salvation. He works very hard trying to keep people's focus on, on the world, on things here and now, and not on the things of God, not on eternity. If, people, uh, if people's minds would be focused on eternity, they would, they would be seeking Jesus. They would be wanting hope for eternity, but the devil has them distracted and blinded so that they can't see the gospel of Christ, they can't hear it clearly. And so we don't we don't veil it, we don't hide it, we present it, but the enemy tries to blind people from seeing the truth. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. So our the message we preach, and as Paul is saying here, is not to lift up self, we preach Jesus Christ and we present ourselves as his bondservants. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. So in complete honesty, we present the gospel of Christ. And in complete honesty, Paul presented the gospel of Christ, not hiding anything, but he was praying for those that had been blinded by the God of this world. Who is the God of this world? That is Satan. When Satan fell, he was cast down to the earth. Uh, and then Paul begins to talk about no matter what happens in our life, as we're presenting the gospel, uh, it's not easy. There are there are obstacles, there are oppositions, there are walls uh, uh, that, that prevent us from, 
from successfully getting the job done sometimes, and we have to pray those things down. And Paul talks about things that he had gone through, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels, and that's that's important to remember. We're we're earthen vessels. We're we're made out of clay and filled with the power and the excellence and the glory of God. He says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellent of the power may be of God, not of us. So we can't take any credit for the power of the message of Christ. It's all of God. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. Look at the comparison he gives here. This is what we're going through, but we're not going to be stopped. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are, uh, we are persecuted, but not forsaken. Remember that. When you're being persecuted, you're not forsaken. The Lord is, in fact, he blesses you when you're being persecuted for his name's sake. We're, we're struck down, but not destroyed. The enemy tries to pull the rug out from under, under us. He tries to cast us down, strike us down, but we are not destroyed. We get up and we continue always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life of Jesus also may be manifest in our body. So we, we recognize that what we're going through is nothing compared to the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, and we uh, allow the Lord Jesus to be manifest in our body, and the others will see the glory of the Lord in us. How do we do that? We, cast, we, we, we die to self, we pick up our cross, we follow him. We cast down everything that's unholy in our life so that the glory of God will shine through us. For, for we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested <clears throat> in our mortal flesh. Now, uh, when he's talking about this, is is all of all of what he's saying there is there's power through weakness. Even though we're mortal, we're weak, and we, get, we come under attack, we're not going to be knocked down. We're, all, all of the glory of God is going to be manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. So the minister of the gospel is constantly under attack. Constant, the, the enemy would love to shut up the gospel of Christ to silence every minister of the gospel of Christ. So the minister of the gospel of Christ is always under attack, but they continue because uh, so then death is working in us, but life in you, so that others will believe and have eternal life. Uh, so Paul was willing to suffer all things that they might know Jesus and the power of God. That's what it's all about. Since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believed and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up, Jesus, raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. So there's a day coming when those who have been preaching the gospel and those who have believed on the gospel will all be raised up and be presented to the Lord to be his children forever. For all things, verse 15, for all things are for your sakes that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. So the grace of God that brings people to salvation, uh, we're, we're saved by grace. It's not by our own works. We're saved by grace through faith. And so that the grace that, that has spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God, that we can give him all the glory. We can take no credit even for our salvation. It is all by the grace of God. And then he wraps up this chapter. It's a short chapter. He says, therefore, we do not lose heart, even, through our outward, even though our outward man is perishing, Yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. And so our outward man, this body, we live in a mortal body. He says this body is perishing, which is true. But also uh, in Paul's case, he was coming under severe persecution. They, in many attempts on his life, they wanted to kill him. Uh, he was shipwrecked several times. All these things, beaten, left for dead, uh, stoned, left for dead. All these things he suffered uh, that... that 
the inward man may be renewed day by day and that he would be able to present the gospel of Christ to those that are hungry. For our light affliction is so all, all the things the Apostle Paul went through. You know, being stoned and left for dead, uh, we would say, man, that's pretty serious. He says, all our light affliction, which is but for a moment. In other words, he says, that was nothing. It was very light and it was just for a moment is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. If, if our focus is on the natural, the physical, what we can see right now, then we're missing the message. Our focus has to be on the eternal, things that are not seen, things that are eternal, things that are to come, for these things are all going to pass away. Everything on the face of the earth is going to pass away, but the word of God will never pass away. For the things which are seen are temporary. Remember? All, it's all going to pass away. The things that are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Those spiritual promises, the promise of, of, of heaven, the promise of eternal life, these things are not seen, and they are eternal. We receive them by faith. We believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And look at what's happening. The world already is perishing. So many things are going wrong on the face of the earth, both uh, in the physical realm, in the natural realm, also in the political realm, financial realm. Every area of life is being, uh, uh, is being presented as perishable right now. So that's, that closes the chapter. Uh, so remember, Paul is willing to suffer all things that they might know Jesus and the power of God. And, 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 and just no compromise. Present the truth without compromise is, is our mission. Let's, let's go to prayer. Our Lord Jesus, we thank you right now. If there's one listening, and, and I pray, Lord, that, that uh, the, the dark scales will fall down, the darkness from the eyes and the mind, the distractions of the things of this world so that that one that's listening will believe on you will have a desire to have their sins forgiven and washed away and believe on you for eternal life lord we we thank you we thank you for the things that are not seen are more real than the things we can see in this physical life lord we have you as lord and savior we have heaven we have eternal life Oh, Lord, and all the promises, there are real today and forever in you, Lord Jesus. I pray for that one to cry out right now. Lord Jesus, forgive me my sins. Come into my heart and be Lord of my life. With godly sorrow, ask the Lord to forgive your sins right now and come in and be Lord of your life. Lord, I pray for the church to be stirred up in this great end time harvest. It's time to go out in the fields. It's time to bring them in. Lord, use the body of Christ, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Look for an encouraging message on Saturday morning. And I thank you for listening. God bless you. Uh, have a wonderful day in Christ Jesus.